Oh, are you on? I'm here. Shalom. Shalom. Okay, it's time. You ready to break it down? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, family, we are on the link called Safaria. All right. I have put it in there. So everybody save that link. This is this is the records that the Jews that the they use, the ish people use. And it has a lot of history spanning back from the time of the temple and even afterwards. Some of them written by our ancestors. And then some of it written by the European rabbis. It's a collection of all of that. And this is what the ish people use and they hold more sacred, this more sacred than the Bible or the Torah, the laws of Moses itself. So what we're doing now, if we're on this site called Safaria, and this is these are the books of the Talmud. OK, so what we're going to do. Where should we start, Elder? Um, you want me to speak now? Yeah, go ahead. OK, yeah. Uh, I just want to say Shalom about a quote. Uh, peace and blessings to Kol Yisrael, to all our family. Um, I, what I want to do is, um, for, for those who are familiar and those who aren't, um, with a few terminologies that are used, just so we understand it when we come across it, okay? So when we come across the word, um, you'll see the word uh, Gomorrah, okay? So when we see the word Gomorrah, but G-E-M-A-R-A, it's the root word Gamar. And that literally means to finish, okay, or complete, okay? And then the other word we're going to see is the mish is the word mishnah, and that means repetition, okay? So it's important for us to know the origins of these. These are Hebrew words and the origins of them. So the, the mishnah, okay, that was the original version of the oral law that That's God right spoke here, to man. Moses. On the screen, family. Okay. So I'm circling that on the screen so that they can see. Okay. Yes. The mission. Okay. Okay. So that's the original version of the oral law. Um, even in Ethiopia, uh, the Levitical priests had an oral law that was handed down through tradition, but none of these things contradicted the Torah. The original one that was handed down did it. Okay. It's not what you see today. And then the Mishnah, when we see the word Mishnah, that's uh, I'm sorry, the, the, I'm sorry, the word Gomorrah, that will be the interpretation. So rabbis, this rabbis will come later and start interpreting that oral law, meaning taking a step beyond, okay, than what was told. So, you, so we'll see some of that, okay? So just a little brief history. Um, this was basic, this work was completed originally in the second and fifth centuries CE, okay? And what was going on during that time? And I think the, the rabbi, that was most close, closely related with the completion of the Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda Hanisi. This is actually a Hebrew brother of ours, okay? So this was in his lifetime. So because you had the Romans rule in Palestine, a lot of the, uh, we had a yeshiva, we had our institutions, they were being destroyed. So that's why a lot of things went to Ethiopia, a lot of writings. So we have to realize there's records of stuff. This is not Torah but it was still records that we had of things that went on, events that went on and whatnot. So one of the things that you'll see in the Mishnah, what it had was one book is called Zarim, which is literally from the word Zara, meaning seeds. So that's about the laws of agriculture, prayer and tithes. The next is Moed, which is festivals. And that's about like Sabbath and different festivals. Another word, another um, chapter is called Nashim, which is about women. It's about marriages, divorce, contracts. Okay. Um, and then Nesekin, that's what damages about civil criminal laws, courts, uh, further laws and oaths. The next one was Kodeshim, which is holy right. things. That's about sacrifice law. And the last one is Tohra, which is basically laws, purity and impurity. So this is just so we know a, a little background. So if we can, brother, can brother Jedi, can we go to that um, on um, so, Safari? Okay. And, uh -huh. The so rabbi Perky twenty four was that twenty four? Yeah, per Perky twenty four. That's what we're gonna. This is this is what we're gonna open with, right. and we're gonna read it. We're gonna see the English, but brother uh, Jediah is gonna have to zoom into the screen to read. They highlight the Hebrew parts because remember when this is coming in English, 
they are translating this to English. So remember, the people who are translating this to English, um, they're not our people. Okay, right. we're going to get our to people. It. We're going to get to it. We're going to pull it up on the screen so the people can see it, and then we'll explain the details because I know people are waiting for this information. So I'm going to get this to them. This is yes. right here it's about the text. So this mm -hmm. is when it was composed. Okay. During the time of 630 C and 1030 uh, CE. Okay, this is the history that this is how old it goes back. And this is what the Jewish people use today. All right. So now we're going to go to Per K, Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer mm -hmm. is one of their most revered rabbis in their Talmudic literature. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go to, all right, contents, chapter 24. Okay. So chapter 24. So again, remember, Safaria Pirke, the Rabbi Eliezer, chapter uh -huh. 24. We're going to uh -huh. go to chapter 24, and it talks about Nimrod uh -huh. and the Tower of Babel. Nimrod yes. and the Tower of Babel. We're going to read it in English first, and then I'm going to read it for y'all in Hebrew. I'm going to uh -huh. enlarge it. Okay, Brother uh, Logic, can you start to read, please, again? The Rabbi Eliezer, Pirke, Rabbi Eliezer, paragraph or section 24, Nimrod in the Tower of Babel. Write this down, family. Write it down. Okay, important. All right, go ahead. Pirke, chapter 24. Oh, Nimrod sorry, in the family. Tower. What happened? Uh -huh. hold, hold on one second. I hit something. <laughs> <laughs> you got so excited, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, man, here we go. Okay. Okay, right. Nimrod in the Tower of Babel. Oh boy, sorry, let me get. Okay, Rabbi Eliezer. Okay, section 24. Nimrod in the Tower of Babel. Here we go, family. Write it down. Go ahead, Ock. Nimrod in the Tower of Babel. Noah brought his sons and his grandsons, and he blessed them with their several settlements. And he gave them as an inheritance all the earth. He especially blessed Shem and his he sons. He especially blessed Shem. Now, this is about who we are. They want to say anti Semitic, right? Read, go ahead. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, making them. Dark but comely, and he but gave he them, blessed them not making them. We're going to read it in Hebrew to be uh -huh. what dark but comely, dark uh -huh. but comely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he gave them the habitable earth. He blessed Ham and his sons, making them dark like the raven. Ham and he was gave, blacker than Shem, but Shem mm -hmm. was black, uh -huh. Ham was darker. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's look at Japheth. And he gave them as an inheritance the coast of the sea. He blessed Yafet and his sons, making them entirely white. This and he is gave... their book. Family, write it down. This is their book. Shem is black. Ham is dark black. And Japheth is white. That's right. So say the rabbis that they go mm -hmm. by. And these were written for the time of our ancestors in Babylon, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's all of the details that um, Elder Zohar is trying to bring out, that these things were written by our ancestors. Now, now, I was going to say something, um, Brother Jediah. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know when we look at translations, like of, we'll give an example, Song of Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. When we see Song of Solomon, it, some translations will say, I am dark and comely, right? Some will say, I am black and comely. But we know the word for and is why. It's not saying right. but, it's saying and. But people who are, who are racist, they can't bring themselves to say and. Right. So they choose to use the word but, but we know the word is why there. Right. And we know the word that they're saying for dark, we know it's the word shakor. And that word yeah. is shakor, you know, it's the feminine, but it's using the root word shakor, which only means black. That's so, but when they do English... Up. When they do English translations, they will choose some you can see. King James puts black. Others can't bring themselves to say it. 
say dark. So I know you're going to get to this and you're going to highlight mm -hmm. and we're yeah. going to show the actual Hebrew word, what it means and what it only means. I'll let mm -hmm. you go. Dang, Toda. All right. So mm -hmm. we're going to show you first. I want to show you all the word and strong Shakur. Hebrew word 87835. Let me put it in, in here, okay? Y'all look it up. Black in Hebrew. Uh, black. <laughs> Equals Shakur. <laughs> okay, 87836. Uh -huh. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, I'll put it in the chat so everybody can see. This is the word we're looking up, okay? H7836. So let me pull that up first so people can see the words in Hebrew. Uh -huh. Okay. H7836. Shakur. Oh, 7835. 7835, family. Sorry about that. 7835. This is the right one. Black. I'm putting it in the chat. Uh, I call H7835. This is why they don't want us knowing Hebrew, y'all. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. So now it's on the screen. Let me see if I can enlarge it. I might not be able to with this, but this is what we're looking at. Okay. 87835 on the screen. Shakur, Shakar. A primitive uh -huh. group through the idea of duskiness or early dawn to be dim or dark in color. But what does it mean here, family? What does it say? To be uh -huh. black. To be black. To be black. Uh -huh. Shakur means uh -huh. that you are black. Okay? Yes. The letters are Sheen, Kaf, and Reish. Shakur. Three, that's the root. Sheen, Kaf, Reish. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay? If it's plural, if it means many people are black, uh -huh. it would be Shakurim. Sheen, K, uh -huh. Reish, Yod, Mental Feet. So now we're going to uh -huh. show you that it doesn't just say here, like here when they translated it into this English, it says Noah bought his sons and his grandsons and he blessed them with their several settlements and he gave them as an inheritance all the earth. He especially blessed Shem and his sons, making them dark, but comely Noah says he made them black and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black and beautiful is what it says, not dark and comely, black and beautiful. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, so now let's read it in Hebrew, all right? Barak Noah, or Noah blessed Ubaniwa and his sons. Um uh Shana Wayibarek. Um uh and he blessed them. Wayibarek old time and he blessed them. Um uh -huh. Elohim and Elohim blessed them. Ba mit uh mit no teak. I'm not sure what that word is. Mit no teha. He blessed them with the gifts, right? Matan is gifts. So I think he blessed them with gifts. Cain. Matano teha. Wahan kalim. Wahan kalim. No, wahan kilam, rather. And he gave them an inheritance. Oh. Over all the earth. He gave hello. God or Elohim gave Noah and his sons an inheritance and gifts over all the earth. Oh, Barak Lashem, and he blessed Shem, Ulbaniwa, and his sons, Shekorim, to be black. Oh, oh man, it went back again. <laughs> okay, are we here? We're in the same place, family. Okay. Bear with me. I'm trying to highlight the words, and then sometimes it's a little difficult. Okay, Shekorim, he blessed them to be black. This is the Hebrew word. This is the, the word. Uh, let me pull it up from Strong's again. This is the plural sense of the word. H7835, to be black. Uh -huh. Let me put it in the, in the chat again, okay? 
Y'all got that in the post? You see it in the chat? To be, hallelujah, to be black, to be Mm -hmm. black. Okay, that's what we're looking at. This Hebrew letter right here, 87835 is the root to be black of this word here. So he made Shem and his sons black with Naim. Naim means pleasant, comely, beautiful. Let's let's show them Naim. Oh. Naim. Give me one second. Just like Naama. Uh Read some comments in the meantime. I got to pull this up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, 